Hi, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to be uh, doing a video here that's a little different from what I usually do. Uh, this will be a introvert's guide to direct sales and social media marketing. Um, if you haven't been watching me, I just want to let you know a little info about me. My name is Marilyn Opitz. Uh, my company is Beaver Girl Beauty. Uh, I am an Avon sales representative as well as a team leader. And I have also been a hairstylist and a makeup artist for over 37 years. So I have a lot of uh, direct one-on-one -on -one sales experience as well as experience working in the direct sales industry. So, and I've been able to use, one thing has helped, one aspect of my business has helped the other aspect of my business and vice versa. The direct sales has also helped my beauty business and my beauty business has actually helped my direct sales business. But a lot of lessons have been learned along the way, okay? And so many people think that to uh, do a job where you're dealing with the public, you have to have um, uh, a very outgoing extroverted personality. Um, and I am a living proof that you don't have to be. I'm naturally very introverted and, um, you know, and, and I have gone on a journey to be able to get myself more confident and get myself more comfortable in being able to, you know, talk with people one-on-one -on -one, in the public eye, as well as here doing videos, as well as doing, you know, full-on presentations in front of a group. Um, and, and so I, this is actually a series of, uh, a few other videos that I'm going to be doing that, you know, kind of mixing it up in with my other videos to just kind of give you some help and advice to, you know, maybe it might help you with some other areas of your life, even if you're not in direct sales, it just might, you know, just give you some great confidence boosting. Or if you are interested in joining me and my team, or if you're interested in working with another direct sales company, this can, you know, help you, uh, or in any job, you're dealing with the public or even going in a job interview or doing some of the things that are out of your comfort zone in general, uh, this should uh, really, you know, help you and uh, propel you to kind of move forward. So uh, first of all, I just want to welcome you into the world of direct sales, which can be so rewarding. Um, a lot of people say, oh, it's a pyramid scheme. You don't want to get caught up in this. So you're going to be, you're going to be miserable that, you know, not, you know, granted, not everything is cut out for everybody, but for me, it's been so rewarding on multiple levels from setting my own schedule to having more time with family and friends to have more time to be able to pursue other interests. Okay. My art, my art business, uh, my writing, a uh, lot of creative endeavors. I've been able to be on podcasts. I've been able to do voiceovers. I've been able to do all different kinds of creative things because the direct sales, uh, has been able to enable me to bring in a new source of income and not physically work as hard as I was doing when I was working standing you know six days a week hour 40 hours a week sometimes 60 hours a week standing behind the chair or and it's the same thing as if someone is strapped to the cubicle life you know and so or whatever type of job that they're they're working in that really doesn't feel like it reflects who they are and and their personality and their passion and their purpose so for me um, what I'm doing with my business is a direct a uh, new way of helping people look, feel, uh, look and feel better as well as, you know, feeling more confident and feeling more empowered in, in, in their lives. So, uh, you know, and I feel like my message as well as the products can really make such a huge difference and not just with the people on my uh, the, my customers but it also helps with the people on my team and it's helped grow uh, their incomes and uh, grow their uh, confidence and so that, that they can be more so they're being more successful in their life going forward or, or, or at least that's what I hope to accomplish and that's sort of like what we all want to accomplish is be able to enrich not only enrich our own life but enrich the lives of others, correct? Uh, so, 
Um, I'm not a naturally outgoing person, you know, and, and we always see those other people and we think, oh, they have to be a, an extroverted person. They always know the right thing to say. They're always so uh, confident in the moment and they're always wearing the right thing and they're always, you know, so graceful and they're always, you know, not awkward in any kind of a way. But let me tell you, those people are few and far between. Um, you could even find the most extroverted people, some like comedians, performers, often they are very insecure and very uh, lacking confidence, but what they'll find is some way to work it out so that, that they can uh, show a side of themselves so that they can uh, you know, market what they were trying to market, whether it's jokes, whether it's a performance, whether it's, so they kind of will work from a script or figure something out and memorize things. And sometimes the script is what's giving them uh, the confidence to go forward. So it's not really their personality. It can be a character they're creating when they're on stage, or it's a character that they're, you know, an actor or performer is creating something so that that is what's propelling them. And, um, you know, for years I did that. When I first started blogging, I had my Biba Girl personality. My Biba Girl personality was sort of like all of the things that made me uh, happy and what inspired me. And it was sort of when I first started blogging, it was now, you know, 14 years ago, it was me getting back to the things that made me happy and the things that inspired me and blogging about those things, whether it was fashion or beauty or, or things, and it was just being able to, a different way to express it than just be standing behind the chair. And and at that point, it was we were just blogging and just typing, and that was very different than actually putting myself forward because I could cre almost like say oh I went to this party or I'm taking pictures at the Oscars or I'm watch even if I'm just watching the red carpet on TV I would be blogging about the fashions from those places and imagining what it would be like if I was there and not at home in sweats feeling sorry for myself for being stuck in a situation that I wish I was out of and and so at that point you know I it was it was that was my way of channeling my energy and and putting that idea out into the universe okay so really um personality wise I'm, i was really happiest as a um, artist as a, a artist or a writer that just sits in the room by themselves just to, whether it's typing on a computer or doing artwork by myself not really being with people um that's was always my comfort zone really um you know and i felt that uh from that artist mindset uh i grew a love for other creative things right so the thing is is that uh those other creative things were things that needed to be marketed okay whether it was you know selling my artwork or showing my artwork to other people um or participating in a critique in an art class i had to be able to speak well in front of people i had to uh taking a media class i had to learn how to and that was the first time i'd ever saw myself on video and it actually made me even be even more introverted because I was so self-conscious of what I look like on camera. Um, I was, uh, but a lot of the creative things that I really loved were things about the fashion business, were things about the beauty business, were things about um, the theater world and performing. But the problem was that I was so incredibly awkward, I was so incredibly shy, I was quirky, I'm short, uh, my teeth aren't straight, uh, overweight, I wasn't feeling Feeling comfortable in my body that developed so early and the awkward years so that some people might go through for maybe a few years in junior high for me my awkward years were decades I'm still I'm still experiencing the awkward years but you know it, it sometimes is just getting more comfortable in your own skin and realizing that you know what do I have to work with okay so for me I always had my knowledge to work with but for, but for the hardest thing was was to feel confident especially when the people on the outside were telling me that I belonged behind the scenes that I built they didn't want me to be seen oh no 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 you these clothes can't fit you oh no 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 you're best doing hair in the back 
to the salon. Oh, no. And then I, I believed it. Okay. I believed it. I wanted, uh, to please people. I thought, okay. And, and as well as I got involved with people who always had to be the stars and I was the best friend. I was the sidekick. I was the Rhoda to the Mary. I was the, you know, uh, the Brenda to the Rhoda. I was the, um, Ethel to the Lucy, you know, that kind of a thing where I was supporting, or even, even if it wasn't, if it was another, but it could have been a male character, a male figure that they were the ones who were the star and I was the supportive and that kept me behind the scenes and it kept me as the wind beneath their wings, so to speak, where I was pushing them forward. But that did nothing for my own personal confidence or growth. Um, that just kept me in that safe, safe comfort zone. Right. Okay. So, um, I, 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 but at the same time, I felt like I had no control over my voice. I had no control over my nerves. I felt no control over my clutziness. I There were times where I was so shy and awkward where this is before we had online job applications, but you know, even just going to the drugstore to get a, to try to get a cashier job, I was so shy and awkward. I had no confidence to even apply, to go in and ask, hey, can I get a job application to fill out to get this job? I walked up and down and up and down the aisles of this drugstore uh, just to gain the confidence to even ask the person behind the counter who wasn't even the manager to, for a job application. And I and there were times where sometimes it took two or three times of me going to that store and I knew that I needed that job, but I just had no way. And this is, you know, like when you're in high school, that when you have very limited situations, you get tired of babysitting, you get tired of cutting grass, what are you going to do next, you know? And, um, so I w was stuck, right? So there were times where, and then there were times where when I would get a certain job like that, I would make mistakes. Uh, sometimes I'd be, get overwhelmed and I'd make mistakes. And then I would, then that would set me back even more because I'd beat myself up for making those mistakes. So it took me a long time to finally get past that place. Um, you know, but I'm here to share with you the steps that help me to, to not be stuck anymore. Okay. So, okay. So how did I get over those anxieties and those problems that were holding me back? Okay. So the first step that helped me, uh, really f find was to help me move forward from that bad, bad situation was to find some like-minded friends. Okay. Like-minded people. And it can be people you know in your real life, people you meet in real life. You could meet them through meetup groups or, or meet them. Or right now, everything is social distancing. But so it would be, a, a, you know, a meetup group that you're doing a Zoom or something. Uh, but Or it could be a Facebook group or it could be uh, any kind of a social media group. Or it could be, you know, like I said, an in-person club. It could be your place of worship or it could be, you know, a numerous kinds of community groups, all different kinds of things. But if you can find people who, you know, once you share your humor and your interests with another person, it's so validating because they themselves, you know, are making you feel like, oh, you're not the only one. You're not so alone. As, as well as things like, as if you have the same likes and dislikes uh, together, uh, you know, you're not alone in liking what you like or disliking what you dislike. And finding those people people along the way. It's sort of like Dorothy finding the uh, Tin Man and the Lion in the Wizard of Oz. You know, it's like these are your comrades. You're running down the road, yellow brick road together, right? You're experiencing this together. Um, you're, you're finding those people along the way who inspire you and, and, uh, and, 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 and you can share laughs with, and you can share, uh, your pitfalls, you can share your, your triumphs and, the, and they'll be cheering you on. Once I found, and, 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 you know, and I've had different times in my life where I've had, had one, one type of group and then things change and things kind of splinter and people kind of go in different directions and then finding new time, finding new people to share things with 
can be hard, but finding once you find those people again or find find new uh new people because you might be in a different phase in your life too at the next point, and you might find some people who you share your who you are now, and those people can be like cheerleaders for you. I know when I found uh the, some new good friends in the last few years, it's been it's been like a gift. You know, it really is. It's really been like a gift. Uh, finding people who get me and and who want me to be successful and I want them to be successful too right okay so it's a huge difference it makes a huge difference uh so that kind of because when you're with them you're not in into yourself you know you when you're with them you're laughing you're talking you're sharing um those things bring you out you know um and that brings you out out of yourself and out into the world um and then if they have more friends or they have people that you might meet or uh, and then you you kind of get more comfortable kind of expanding your scope a little bit from there I got a second thing that helped me was that when I first started dealing with the public was I couldn't stay in the dead air space, okay? The dead air space is a TV or radio term. I couldn't stand that when when it was all quiet. Now, I know some introverted people are very, very quiet. Um, I myself, am, you know, enjoy talking, enjoy people. So what I did was I had to, when I was with a customer and there was awkward moments where they were so quiet and you just didn't know what to say, I found something to make a conversation about, whether it was, you know, paying them a compliment or, you know, uh, talking about family life or finding things about their job or finding some finding some sort of uh, looking at those people to find something about them to talk to because people like to talk about themselves, right? So if you get them talking about, oh, you know, oh, I like that purse. And they say, oh, I got that purse on vacation. Oh, really? W where did you go on vacation? And they say the Bahamas. You get them talking about the Bahamas. The next thing you know, you've got a conversation going. Suddenly the dead air space is gone. The awkwardness is gone. And you can kind of have a little bit of a, a back and forth, okay? Um, you know, in the beauty industry, in my, what I do, we're kind of like bartenders. You know, we listen to people's problems, people often will open up to us when they've never met us before uh, while we're doing our job um and but at the same time so we are our our, our, our job is like a two-parter it's not only like a bartender's pouring the drink but he's it's also they're also listening right so with us is we're you know doing the service whether it's recommending products or 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 doing their hair or their makeup we're also listening to them and listening to what the client needs and wants so that we can give them the best service possible so it's the same thing with direct sales direct sales is what does the client need what what are they looking for? Uh, what would you what do you think that they might want want to have? And what they what they might want to they might sometimes they don't know what they really need. Sometimes a stranger you don't really know, but you might you find something right away. You can sometimes see an instant. See oh I see that you. You know, you're driving a red car. Oh, that's great. You know, and and did you know that I have a a cleaner that you can that'll work on cars? Yeah, this is great. That doesn't you know, or whatever it is. Oh, I see. I love your makeup. You know, I sell makeup. You know, there can be something. Whatever your company you're a part of, or with a company with I am that has a whole range of different products, there can be something that anybody can might need or want that you can find. So it's the same kind of thing is finding out what they're what they're looking for and or seeing being able to be observant enough to see what what might appeal to them and offer and then and share with them the benefits of your product so but be open to listen to the customer's needs uh, is so important for direct sales too and being a good listener. And that was something I really had to work on because before I was just bup, 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 just listen, just chatting and not really listening and learning. So a lot of this was growth of me working on my issues, of why I just had this endless talking and not uh really listening to what the client needs were okay so okay so um so the third thing is to getting into a sharing mindset okay so i know many of us who are introverts we don't share 
okay? Many things about, let's say, my life wasn't all that pleasant to talk about, okay? My background was very complicated, had a lot of sad and dark times associated with it. Um, and, and, and even in my adult life, some choices I made weren't always, you know, some, there were some good times, a lot of good times, but there were also a lot of dark times too. And we're all made up of good and bad things, right? So I also, I learned to edit my life. Okay, I learned to edit certain things. Uh, if somebody was asking me about like where I grew up or, or certain things about my childhood or certain things, I would just find one or two great things and just talk about those things. And then it made it sound like everything else was great, you know. I'm not saying to negate talking about, you know, but at first, especially when you're first meeting people, you don't need to like you know, tell everything, you know, you don't, you wait to spill or as well as you find a way to make what you've been through kind of, you know, a, it can be into an interesting story, a funny story, um, uh, you know, f something to share that might be appealing, find something that'll be appealing to them and concentrate, or even if you don't want to share anything, if you can't think of anything, you, t you talk about, have your experience with the products that you're selling be your story. I, I use this, I switched from this brand's moisturizer to the nip, the brand that I represent. And it, you know, all of a sudden my skin cleared up or I experienced, you know, I had some problems with bug bites and I started using the, uh, bug guard wipes. And all of a sudden I'm having a bite free summer every summer, every time, ever since I started working for this company, you know, those kinds of things, sharing a part of what, what your experience is becomes that's your story is your story is your story with the products and you know it, and that becomes very relatable okay you want your your story to be a relatable part of the story your story with the products and and so you know that can be what ch how it's changed you and you've got to believe in what you're doing. You've got to believe in what you're a part of. If you are working for a company that's about cooking and you don't know anything about cooking, but you signed up because you thought it was going to help you earn some money, you know, well, I'd say either learn some, learn about cooking or use some, some of the gadgets that say, well, I'm nervous about cooking, but these are the things that are helping me learn to be less nervous about cooking about my business okay same thing with what i do a lot of avon is makeup but we also have clothes we have um uh jewelry we've got personal care we've got uh wellness products we've got clean out cleaning products so i tell people on my team if you're not really all that into makeup then don't worry about selling that if you, you know, but if you like your house to be clean, then talk about the cleaning products. Or if you, you know, if you go camping and you're a camping person, you like to go camping, talk about how the bug guard help you not get, you know, prevent Lyme disease, you prevent you getting Lyme disease by not getting bit when you went camping with your family, you know, or how you use the sunscreen on your kids. There's got to be something in your business, in the business you work for, where that you can show your own experience with those products and how, uh, and how it's going to bring value to your customers' lives. Okay, so, and your customers uh, will want to be part of that experience and share in that experience with you and, and, uh, and, and, and share for themselves too, you know. So the fourth step is to be prepared. Okay, I'm a mitt. Okay, I'm lousy at memorizing. I'm lousy at remembering names. I'm terrible, at, especially when it comes to scientific terms, as well as being nervous when I forget something. Sometimes I'll be in the middle of doing a video here and I get so nervous and so forgetful and I get tripped up, but I just as long as I get somehow know that I have to stay on track, okay? Um, it, it can be, get me so distracted that I forget the important details of what I'm talking about and it makes me more nervous and you get on that, you get on that thing, you start dropping things and then you don't look confident and then you just get hate yourself so much because you're going through this. So believe me, I understand, I've been there. The clutziness can add to it, but you know, I, I make sure that I'm much more prepared when I'm in front of the camera. So, or if I'm doing an in-person, 
uh, demonstration or on stage or something where I'm going to be on, on a, a podcast or a radio show or something like that. Make sure you're prepared. So like here I have notes. I'm working from notes. When I'm doing my videos, I make sure that I have everything at my fingertips. I found that, you know, even with, with the company I work for, we have a lot of compacts that are almost exactly alike. And I found that just, you know, if I, do I want to keep always having my reading glasses on and off no so I made little labels so I knew whatever what the name of things were right where you know I wanted find a system find a system because having a system ahead of time in plan uh, in place f for your plans so that when you're on camera or when you're in front of people you are a lot less nervous and a lot less able to trip up okay um, so you know and also be hydrated um, uh, have your temperature where you're working or you're filming or you're talking be help you be comfortable um, also you know limit your distractions have your lighting good you know a lot of times I'm fooling around with the lighting because all of a sudden sometimes with a phone or sometimes even a shift in electricity something and that, that throws me off so I know that if it's good and consistent I'm less distracted so those are all important things uh, sometimes just being by the window if you don't if you don't have the money to buy a special selfie light or a special thing for one thing you can get them for five dollars at five below or Walmart or somewhere but if not the why the window is great too you know uh, the the sunlight and by the window is some of the best lighting you can see the right here there's strong lighting coming from outside so that is you know I could be out there and have perfect lighting but I wanted to have my desk here but you know a lot of times it's where you're most comfortable Okay. Um, some people like having their pets around and some people like having their kids around, but sometimes they can be distractions too. So it just depends. Sometimes having the dogs and the kids around can make you look even more relatable, can make those who have pets and kids feel like, oh, they can be part of your story too. As long as they're not taking you away from so much because I've sometimes often seen uh, direct salespeople with their kids and doing different things and they have a lot of fun with it and they'll have kids telling jokes and they have and and a lot of times it's very wonderful so it just depends on your kids and it depends or same thing with your partners or your parents or whoever your, your roommates whoever you're living with uh, that can be a part of your story too and um, so if it's if it's an in, in, in integral part of the story. If it's not, if it's not about, if you're doing a product demo about serum and unless you're going to be using it on them, uh, sometimes those things can be a distraction. So make sure that uh, it's, it pertains to your purpose and your purpose is your product and what you're what you what you're trying to do okay so the fifth step is start listening and watching to reading personal development okay uh self-help resources you, you you can be under that umbrella uh, at least 15 minutes a day uh but you can start with five you know if you only have five minutes you know but it can be a podcast that you listen to in the car it can be you know something you listen to while you're getting ready in the morning on your youtube video on your phone it can as long as as it's something that you can do it while you're cleaning, where you're dropping the kids off, whatever, those kinds of things uh, of, of, of personal development and self-help can be really beneficial because they help you work on yourself. If you find people to listen to who motivate, energize, and inspire you, once you learn that the, the things that they're talking about, uh, the steps of things that, you know, that they're giving you to move forward, you'll have a higher level of energy, okay? And then once you have that higher, or they call it a vibration, a higher level of vibration, and once you have that higher vibration level, then that makes you excited. Then that can't, you can't wait to share uh, talk, uh, something about that product or these things because you've got that you've worked on your healing yourself you've worked on healing your inner traumas you worked on those things that make you be more inside yourself right um, and 
and then you'll have a higher level of vibration when you're talking about your business or the products of your business when you're doing a presentation. Okay, so once I discovered uh, the people who inspire me to listen to, I love Alanya Van Zandt, I have uh, T T Bishop T.D. Jakes, um, I have a whole, you know, set of people who I listen to who help me out, and even it could be listening to the same thing over and over again, but if that thing helps, you know, get you, it's just like a good coach for a football team that says, you're going to get out there and you're going to, you're going to succeed and I want you to succeed and I believe in you, or, and even if just some good phrases and some good inspiring messages as well as you know some, maybe it's a, something that you've got some blockage you know you've got some things that you need to forgive maybe you've got some things that are uh, some hurts and some pains and things that just like physical pain that emotional pain can be in the way um, and maybe there's things in your personal life you need to move forward from that you need to gain strength to to be able to move forward so that they're holding you back you know and so they're not holding you back anymore to kind of work on those things so going doing that kind of work really can build help build the confidence and really uh, help you learn and be more open to learning about how to grow your business where the things about if your business changes you'll be more able to go with the flow I was always somebody that anytime anything ever changed in any workplace or any company I work for, I'd be like, oh my God, they changed everything. I hate it. Well, now I've gone through a huge change, uh, a company that's gone through a huge change, and I've been able to kind of go with the flow and work with, within those changes and kind of, and, and be able to accept them and deal with them much, much better than I, than I would have been able to do it 10, 15, even 20 years ago, because I had been working on myself and just be like, okay well you know what here's an there are some changes but these if these changes are going to help me move forward well let me be open to that okay so that is something that's very different from the maryland uh, that people knew 20 25 30 years ago that's a very different person and that is a good thing because i was whole i was in my own way i was really getting in my own way from from being successful um, so though that and that's all from personal development uh, and I stopped worrying about what could go wrong and I started getting excited about what could go right okay that is huge that is so huge I started I started imagining that the strangers who I had feared that I was now talking to as I saw them as potential friends or potential customers or potential you know team members um, so, so, uh, everybody's dealing with stuff. Everybody's dealing with their problems in their life and personal problems and worries and stresses. But I stopped being afraid of what, of what the, what those people might do or might judge me, how they judge me and just be like, Hey, you know, I just want to offer this and, 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 and then not be afraid if they say no and just be like, Okay, well that's fine too, but you know, hey, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'd really love to, con I really think that, you know, we have a great connection here, and I can connect with them on something else, you know, on another level. They can still be my friend if they don't buy my product, they can still be my, uh, a great business contact if they don't join my team, I might, I might be able to learn something from them with what they're doing, you know, and, 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 and I, I even may get some business, great business ideas and help me with my business from how they're doing their business. Or I might be able to partner with them in some way. So, or later on down the road, they may change and they might might want to be a part of what I'm doing. But either way, it's a great business contact, right? So that is something, and these are something that... Uh, that good business people learn down and 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 are taught this but a lot of times when especially in work that is commission based where every man for themselves you're taught it you've got to just take care of your stuff you got to take care of your own hand you know take care of your own customers and you can't care about anybody else and you can't and it's a very bad path it's a very it, it's only of one to, it's only a very limited potential and it keeps you stuck in that limited potential place as a and it keeps you working harder and not smarter so being able to see beyond that and to be able to have more personal growth along the way in addition to you when you're when you're when you're going forward with your personal growth it actually helps your financial growth 
So, um, you know, and, and, and it's been able to uh, help me have some great new experiences. Um, it's been able to have me have some amazing connections and, uh, and, and some, some really great, uh, uh, memories and, uh, really great friends as well as business connections and new team members and, uh, just being open to listen and being open to help and seeing if somebody needs help, being able to offer help, um, as well as at not being afraid to ask for help for myself too. So I have more tips and ideas that have helped me along the way. Um, and uh, look for more of these types of videos. I'm gonna be throwing them in between my makeup videos where I'm just laughing and just putting on makeup and having fun. Um, and there'll be like a part two and a part three coming soon. Thanks all so much always for watching me and being supportive of me. Uh, please share this video. You know, if you know anyone who's, uh, you know, wanting a little bit of some, uh, some help or or someone who's interested in direct sales and wants some advice and starting a business or or looking uh, to uh, to join or might someone who might be interested in joining with me um, so you know share this with someone who might might be into it you know might or might might need this advice you know just in in other areas of their life okay uh, but you know don't forget to hit thumbs up and please 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 subscribe uh, you know every little bit helps and uh, so anyway thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye